Hey everybody, what's up? I'm Nicholas from Leftover Content, also known as Milky Seed, and welcome back to Let's Play Banjo Kazooie. Last time, we explored all of Spiral Mountain and entered Gratilda's Lair, unlocking the first level. And in this episode, we're going to explore said level. Kazooie, knock it off! That ass. One thing that I will be unable to show you due to because of this being an emulator is when you actually enter a world for the first time, those puzzle pieces simply basically take a screenshot of the world you're about to enter and fill in the puzzle pieces. And it's a shame that I can't really show off all the 3D effects that this game has to offer, but you know. It this right here is a Jinjo! In each world, there are five Jinjos. By collecting all five Jinjos in a world, you will be given a Jiggy. So it's... Uh, I guess I'll have to explain them in a second. I'll go over the two other collectibles that we just grabbed right now. These are notes. These are the coins of this game. However, collecting 100 of them I don't think actually gives you a life. I'm not entirely sure about that. But there's 100 in each world maximum. There's 100 in each world total, and by collecting all of them, well, we'll go over what they're needed for when it comes up. You'll be given the tutorial on what these are actually used for momentarily. As for the skull that we picked up, that little thing is called a mumbo token. We don't know what they are used for yet. I believe once we pick up another one, they'll tell us what they're used for. But in a sense, they're used for something something that is very vital to this game, and something that made this game, uh, something that made this game pretty... Pretty well known, actually. Alright, so story time. Banjo-Kazooie was a game that I have replayed constantly throughout the years. It rivals the amount of times I've replayed Earthbound. Uh, this right here is... I don't know what they're actually called in real life. I'm just going to call it a bee house. Inside a bee house will always be filled honeycombs. Honeycom filled honeycombs are Banjo's health. So if we go over here and take a hit... Okay, listen here, sir. If we pick this up, as you can see, it fills up. <laughs> anyway, Banjo Kazooie was one of those games I replayed a lot, so me coming to Mumbo's Mountain, it's actually one of my least favorite worlds in the game, believe it or not. Yes, there are worlds later on that people don't really like, and worlds that people really do like. I really dislike Mumbo Mountain because I have replayed the beginning of this game so many times. But anyway, if we come up here, we meet this gorilla named Konga. He will throw oranges at you. So what you have to do is stand on this little switch here, and when you hit them, when Kanga hits them with his oranges, they disappear. Coming over here, hitting all three of them, presents you with a Jiggy. He calls us clever, but really, he's dumb. Now, in each world of Banjo-Kazooie, there is a total of 10 Jiggies. Jiggies can range from simply see finding them in the world with them just being on like a pedestal or something, or you might have to solve a puzzle. My kitten just got his claw stuck on the curtain. <sighs> Toby! Sorry about that cut right there, my kitten got his claws stuck in a curtain. Anyway, if we come over here... Uh, I guess we can't interact with them. You can't interact with them, really? Oh, there we go. This is Chimpy. He won an orange. Now, obviously, this is your first case of puzzle solving. This is usually the first jiggy a lot of people come into contact with. But if you come up here, you can net yourself. D really, Toby? I'm gonna kick your butt. Hit the mic again. <laughs> he just attacked my microphone. That little dingus. Anyway, you take an orange from Congress Tree and bring it back to Chimpy. Chimpy will raise this log for you, and it will also net you a jiggy. And with that, we have two out of the ten Jiggies already. This is probably one of the... Oh. Hmm. We'll go over these in a second. These are eggs! Kazuri can learn how to use them as ammo. Which is what this would be for. Oh, my God. 
Now, as he said, there are two ways to aim the eggs. You can hold Z, which would crouch Banjo, and push forward on the C stick, or in some cases, the um, C buttons if you're playing on the N64, like I am. Well, technically using an emulator and then a pro controller. But if you push C down, because here he poops them out. If we come over here, we can grab another one of these Mumbo Tokens. As you can see, he said used for Mumbo's Magic. We don't know what Mumbo's Magic is yet, but again, we'll go over when time comes. There's a strange switch here that you're going to have to come back for later, but it has Gruntilda's face on it, so yeah. Gross. Standing on it will do nothing. There is a certain way of getting that switch pushed down. Anyway, by coming up here, you can enter what I would think is a mini boss fight i guess this game doesn't really have boss fights this fight to me it was always really weird i've had moments to where whoa okay yeah i've had moments where conga cannot hit for crap and then i've had moments where he is literally the best in history and then i've had moments where he doesn't take damage from his eggs this is the only way you can damage him by the way and he gets see like okay that's weird i'm confused I don't understand what's wrong with Konga. He's a little bit broken, I like to think. Because sometimes you could hit him. Like, I have one recording where I was bashing him with eggs and it just wasn't doing anything. Anyway, you now notice he's no longer throwing oranges at you. So you grab the Jiggy. Now watch out because he'll start throwing Jiggies at Or, yeah, he'll start throwing. I wish he would throw Jiggies at me. No, instead he'll start throwing a bunch of uh, oranges at you again. Anyway, now let's take this path. I... I didn't know what this was supposed to be for the longest time. It's supposed to be like a staircase, but it doesn't look like one. Anyway, instead of going that way, I'm actually going to go this way first. Grab these notes. And like I said earlier, sometimes you'll just find Jiggy's just chilling on a pedestal. Up for the taking. I like... The way that this game is designed, it's... There's also a Mumu token hidden behind this. I really do love how this game is designed. This game does have a sequel, Banjo-Tooie, which I think is the superior game, but it doesn't have as much replay value as the original Banjo-Kazooie. We have a molehill over here so we can talk to bottles to learn a new move, called the Talon Trap. As you can see there, if you're missing any bit of health, bottles will gladly restore you to full. This is the Talon Trot. This is your main method of movement from now to the end of time. I'll probably not be using it a lot because I do think Kazooie's little huffs and puffs there are a little annoying. The Talon Trot is what you need to climb steep surfaces. Steep surfaces. Ugh. It's also just faster to do. Just note you can't... I don't believe you can in this version of Banjo-Kazooie. Yes. In Banjo-Kazooie, you cannot do Kazooie's hover while in the state. I don't even think you... You could still attack with Kazooie. Okay. Now, in Banjo-Tooie, you can do that double jump that she does with the little flutter. For some reason, in Banjo-Kazooie, you can't. And I don't know why it is, but maybe it's to make it less powerful. Wow, I just ran into you. Come here. Every time you kill an enemy, usually no matter the enemy, they will always drop health. So if you're ever low on health, just beat the crap out of enemies. On each of these little huts here is in, is indeed, yes, is a note. Just jump on top and grab all the notes. Very simple. We come over to here. We have this totem. He'll explain that he is Juju, Mumbo's totem, and he'll feed us with nice blue stone. Or feed him with nice blue stones. Which obviously are the eggs that you learned how to shoot earlier. And I am just the best. I am the best at this, let me tell you. God. My cat is playing right behind me and it is super annoying. Do not shoot out the last one. If you do, you'll have to leave this world and come back. Without using that totem as a base, you will not be able to grab that honeycomb piece. And shooting all of them will net you a jiggy. Now, we're, we're already halfway done with this world. Come come over behind these stairs. Get another Jiggy. If we high jump up here, we can get another Jiggy. Like I said, the first, Mumbo's Mountain is one of the smallest worlds in the game and will constantly just throw up Jiggies into your face. You might have noticed this Mohill Hill. Mohill. I can speak. This is called the Beak Buster. 
This is basically the ground pound of the game and required for hitting those grunty switches we talked about earlier. Don't leave Toby. Don't fight me. I will whoop you. There's only three moves to learn in this stage, and once you learn all of them, bottles will inform you of that. I do believe that no matter what order you hit these in, their order is set. For example, the first one you hit will always drop notes. I believe that this is true because when I was testing this out earlier, that guy would always give me something else, that thing. This one would always be the last one I'd hit and would always throw up a jiggy, but nope. This time it was a guy. After hit on the fourth one, you'll get a Jinjo. And you might notice we, there's only one left now. And hitting this will get us an extra life. Did I say that it'd give us a Jiggy? Well, uh, for a second I thought I was wrong. There it is. Whew! <laughs> 70 Jiggy. Or 70 Jiggies, yeah. Seven Jiggies down. Easy. Let's go ahead and collect all these notes. And as you can see, there's just a Jiggy floating in the air. This Jiggy, th this stage, it's the baby starting area, so don't expect there to be too many crazy pr puzzles or anything like that. It's very simple. And this is one of those stages that rewards you for just simply exploring, which I'm perfectly okay with. After all, it makes it easier to bypass when you're just trying to skip through it, like I am right now. If you actually take a look, you can see that there's a small divot over there. If we jump... Okay! Okay! Well, that, that could have gone better. There we go. Inside here is a hidden hun empty honeycomb piece. Pretty easy to miss. I, I always forgot about it when I was a little kid. But now we can actually walk along this surface and grab more notes. Uh, bottles, when we collected 50 notes, Bottles explained to us that we have enough notes to destroy a note door. We haven't seen a note door yet, but I'm sure we'll see one soon. I believe that's all the notes right here for now. And if we grab this... That's all five Jinjos. Only one Jiggy remains already. This level is really short, and the fastest I've ever gotten it done, because I did try to test myself one time, was about 8-7 minutes, something like that. Now then, let's finally go into this building that's probably been taunting a lot of you guys. If we go behind here, we can grab some notes. And in almost every iteration of this building, as it appears in multiple worlds, there's something up in the rafters. Ah! Uh, it's not important, it's just eggs. Now, in Mumbo's hut, you will always need the amount of skulls here in order to use Mumbo's magic for the first time. Afterwards, the sign is no longer important. As you can see, it just disappeared. And Mumbo's magic turns you into a different... Well, it just transforms you. You'll find Mumbo's huts in various worlds, but not in every world. The thing with the termite is the termite will not take any fall damage no matter how far you fall. It can't swim and it can't attack. But it can also climb steep surfaces that the Talon Trot could also climb. So with this, the Talon Trot... You might have been wondering why we didn't come in here with the Talon Trot. The Talon Trot cannot climb this surface right here. Because it is too steep. There are frame perfect ways of doing it. But like I said, this is basically no glitch. Except for one exploit. Oh, it does give you an extra life when you collect all 100. So there we are. We collected all 100 notes in Mumbo's Mountain. And... It starts getting a lot tedious later on in the game to start collecting notes. All these termites are talking mad shit, though. Come out here and we get another extra life, bring us up to a total of eight. And then with that, we can grab the last Jiggy of Bumbo's Mountain.
And with that... Oh, you can't use the D-pad to do that. Okay, that's right. We've collected everything in Mumbo's Mountain. Yeah, no, we haven't. We missed one thing that I actually forgot to go over. So I need to change it. Shut up. Take that, slut. Back where we gave Chippy the orange, you remember that we pointed out this, grunt this grunty pressure plate thingy over here. Now, well, now, with the ground pound, we can push the switch. We're causing it to reveal a jiggy on top of the level gateway. Now, look at how steep that is. The talent trot will not get you up that mountain no matter what. Instead, you'll need to do something a bit more creative. I think you know where this is going. In order to leave a stage in Banjo-Kazooie, you must go back to the little metal plate that you spawned in on. Or you could just save and quit the game, but... You know, that's kind of a weird way of leaving a stage. By going back to this, it'll put you right back at the entry point in which you came in on. As you can see, I am leaving the world as a termite. So, okay. That's Bottles explaining that you do not keep the notes. If you go back and enter, you'll have to collect all 100 notes again in order to get past your note high score. Anyway, climb. you can only climb this as the termite to get you your second jiggy in Gruntilda's castle or lair. If we actually look at the turtles, you'll see that Grunty Slayer is a level in itself. It also has 10 Jiggies for you to collect. Now, if you try to... <clears throat> My cat is attacking me and it hurts. Now, if you try to go <laughs> too far away from the level's origin, you'll notice that it will not allow you to proceed and it changes you back. So sadly, you can't go back to Spiral Mountain as a termite or, I don't know, a washing machine. If you remember this hill over here, though, we can now use the Talon Trot and climb up it. And if we come up here... Toby. Now, as you can see, this is a note door that says 50 notes. If we actually pause the game and look at our note total up at the top right, it will see, you'll see it says we have 100. One thing that I always like to do when coming up here is I like to get on Kazooie and long jump towards this because during the cutscene, it'll make it disappear. I don't know, just something that I thought was always kind of funny. The first thing you want to do upon coming into this new location... Well, besides just looking around. Is make your way over to the left side of the room and go down these stairs. And activate this guy. This is a magic cauldron. If you find two of the same color, you basically create a warp point throughout the layer. Anytime you save, turn off the game, and come back, you'll always start at the... Sp you'll always start by Mumbo's Mountain. You know, in, in the room we originally started in when we first came in here. But anyway, Magic Cauldrons are basically your shortcuts throughout the castle. If we come up to this, we'll see that this is yet another new world. Okay, Bottles, I'm going to need you to shut your face. Bottles, stop talking to me. Once you put all the pieces in place, they're stuck permanently and you can't undo it. And with that, we have unlocked a new world. I think this is a good place to stop. Alright, this is a good place to end off the video. Anyway guys, I'll see you all next time for more Banjo and Kazooie. Are you talking to me now? Grunty, shut up. I'll see you all next time for more Banjo and Kazooie. See you all then. <laughs>